I often see a lot of comments from people saying they want to start the carnival diet, but they're worried or scared to because of X, Y or C. I've collated some of the most common reasons that people are too afraid to start the carnival diet. So we can go over them and I can dispel the fears that you may have for starting the carnival diet. So the first thing that I come across that people are really worried about is meat inversion. So sometimes this is people who haven't started the carnival diet or it might be people who have started it and are experiencing the aversion. The reason I think that this happens is because when you're going from a carbohydrate diet to a protein and fat diet, it can be quite overwhelming for your body. I see a lot of people who talk about the fact that they just went cold turkey and just started carnival one day and then they were having all these symptoms. That happened to me as well, because that's exactly what I did. I had hypoglycemic symptoms, such as severe headaches, real dizziness, feeling really weird in myself and weak. So I had to stop the diet and restart it and tapered down my carbohydrates. When I did that, I didn't experience any side effects whatsoever. So I think that can be a real issue for people when they're starting. And then when they are fully on the meat diet, they're just eating meat at every single meal when they might have had it once or twice a week. Or if they were a vegan or vegetarian, they wouldn't have had it at all. And it's just your body saying, I'm not used to this amount of meat. But you don't want to listen to your body when it's saying that because we are doing the carnival diet and your body will adapt to it. So I think I had one day where I had a meat aversion and I was just looking at the meat and I was thinking, oh my God, I can't face this. I really can't face this. But I just pushed through it. And something I did in order to do that was to have different meats and things, not just meat, but eggs and cheese as well. I found, I really found having cheese within the diet a big help for making me excited about eating because I love cheese and I can't pull it down. I never, never had the same meat two meals in a row. If you want to avoid that meat aversion, then do that because it's just your body saying it's had enough of those nutrients. It needs some different nutrients. We also have to acknowledge that eating the same thing day in and day out is really, really bloody boring. It doesn't matter what it is. If you were eating gatto every day for a month, you'd be sick of the sight of it. So it's not the fact that it's the meat, it's just the fact that you're eating the same thing. You can also try lots of ingredients. I think it's um, Steak and Butter Gal. She does a lot of videos where she shows like recipes and things. So check some of those out and that might keep your interest. I'm not a recipes person, so I'm not really into that. I might do some recipes for the video if that's what you want, but I would rather just throw my meat in the air fryer, cook it and eat it. So the next thing I hear people talk about a lot, it's the biggest thing by far, biggest issue I should say, by far on the carnival diet and that is weight loss stalling. So people see others like myself who have lost a lot of weight on the carnival diet and think I'm going to do this diet because I need to lose weight. So people come to the carnival diet to lose weight and they may lose weight initially and then it stalls. And for me, I didn't lose initially. I didn't lose anything the first month. Then I lost 20 pounds. Then it stalled again and then it became more consistent. When it does stall, there's one of four things that are going on. You're either eating too much, you're eating too little, your macros are wrong, or you're not exercising enough. You really need to just work your way through each of those reasons and try and find out if or which ones are causing you problems. So there is a lot of advice on the carnivore community that say, just eat to your heart's content. Your body will stop you when you're no longer hungry. Now that isn't the case for everyone. If you have a healthy attitude with food, then yes, that can be beneficial. But for people like me who have an eating disorder, who cannot stop eating, then this is really bad advice because it doesn't matter how full you are. If you don't get that signal that you are full, then you are gonna continue eating. 
And another bit of advice I hear is that calories don't matter on carnival. They do. They absolutely do. Um, I am proof of that. I have lost 90 pounds so far. When I started, I was just eating what I want and my weight, I lost an initial 20 pounds after a month and then it just went, my weight started going up again and I couldn't work out why. So I did a 24 hour fast to see if that would help and it did, it helped a lot and I started doing those once a week and my weight was coming down again and it's just because the calories are not there. Yes, intermittent fasting or fasting can help, can have benefits outside of calories, but that's what was happening. Then I fell out of doing those 24 hour fasts and my weight started going up again. So I thought I'd do OMAD for three days, which is one meal a day. So you can eat as much as you want, but in that one meal, I would just eat and eat for that meal until I couldn't eat any more. And when you're eating in a very short period, so I gave myself a one hour window to eat, then there is only so much you can eat. Typically, I was eating around 1100 calories. The weight become a lot more consistent. They do recommend that you don't do OMAD every day, but I do, I have done for months now and I haven't had any issues with that. Now, if you are gonna do fasting over time, the amount you can eat is going to reduce because where you're not eating so much, your stomach is going to shrink, especially if you're not eating for most of the day. And then you will eat less and less until you're not sustaining your body. And this is what happened to me. In the end, I was eating about 800 calories, wasn't hungry, was completely full, but I wasn't eating enough to sustain my body and I was getting very lightheaded, I was getting a lot of dizziness. The biggest symptom of all, my weight loss stalled. And I'm like, I'm eating 800 calories. How on earth can my weight loss be stalling? But it was because I wasn't eating enough. So I then had to have like a week where I was eating whatever I wanted and watching the weight go up, which was a bit daunting to say the least. But then after a week, I went back to where I was at 1100 calories and the weight started coming off again. If it's not either of those things, it could be your macros. So macronutrients are fat, protein, and carbohydrates. We can chuck out the carbohydrates because we're not eating those. The advice is that you need to get a good ratio and you probably need about double fat to protein. At one point, I was doing 70% fat to 30% protein and it didn't work for me. Lots and lots of people have said online that it worked fantastically well for them, but for me, it didn't work. And my face was really bloated and I was putting on weight. The other thing you might be doing wrong is not exercising enough. So if you come to the diet and you're just focusing on the diet and not the exercise, as I was in the beginning, then this could be stalling your process, process, progress. So in the beginning, I couldn't exercise because I was very, very poorly. And I didn't start exercising until about four months in when I started going on longer walks. We know that weight loss is not impacted by exercise. But what I found over time is that indirectly it is. When I was moving, I wasn't able to exercise for about three weeks. During that time, my appetite got out of control to the point where I ended up falling off the carnival diet, even though it's done so much good for me. Um, and then last week I joined the gym and after my first gym workout, my appetite was instantly suppressed. So if you're liking this video, can I ask that you hit subscribe, comment, and leave me a like as well, because those things really help the algorithm to share my videos out more, which is my main aim, because I want to help as many people as I can. If you're so inclined, could you consider purchasing a coffee for me? That supplementation really does support the channel. So the next reason people might be put off from starting the carnival diet, or even they might stop doing it once they've started, is hair loss. Hair loss is something that some people, not everyone, are experiencing on this diet. 
myself included, I've had significant amounts of hair loss. Now, I think it's really important to understand that it's not the carnival diet itself that is causing the hair loss. There are some people that believe it is. I don't believe it is. I believe it's extreme weight loss that is causing it. When you're in a position where you're losing a lot of weight very quickly, you will experience hair loss. You will get that on bariatric surgery. You'll get that on a Zempic. I personally am not going to let it get in the way of my health benefits that I get from the carnivore diet. When I started this diet in February of this year, in a really bad way, bad way the worst of my life with my chronic illness I was barely getting out of bed I'd get into the shower and I'd have to give up halfway through and go back to bed for the day I was losing the will to live if I'm quite honest with you I was also 267 pounds at that time I'm now under 200 I've seen so many benefits I've got more energy I've got more motivation I've got a better body I feel healthier. You know, at one point, just before I started this diet, every time I bent over, I was getting dizzy and my heart was doing funny things. That wasn't a good situation to be in, but I think that was just the obesity that was causing that. And I would have probably ended up with heart disease if I had continued down that road. And now look at me. I'm fantastic to be quite honest with you and it is all thanks to the carnivore diet it's really worth pursuing and i would not let hair loss stop you with hair comes identity especially as women we put a lot of pressure on ourselves for our hair um, and we want it long and flowing and thick and luscious and healthy looking and then you go on this diet and your hair starts falling out and you're getting bold patches and you're like, oh my God, you go into a crisis. I did myself. There are things that you can try, but for me personally, I haven't found an answer to this. Just don't let it affect you as much. That's really crap advice, isn't it? Because easy for me to say, um, but I am going through it myself. Obviously, if I was losing all my hair, then I might have to rethink things. But because I get so many benefits, I have to weigh up the pros with the cons. And the cons are much lower than the pros for me presently. And so I stay on this diet. You reduce your stress because chronic stress is going to cause hair loss. You could also try putting oil in your scalp, massaging it in your scalp. So castor oil is supposed to be really good for this. Rosemary oil, even coconut oil. So another big reason that might put you off doing the carnival diet is that cholesterol can go up. You've only got to go on YouTube to see all sorts of horror stories about people saying their cholesterol has gone sky high. And obviously cholesterol matters. We're really concerned about cholesterol. We have been told our whole lives that if your cholesterol goes high, you're going to be at risk of a heart attack. The first thing to say when you go on a carnival diet is you're going to expect your cholesterol to rise. Now, it doesn't rise for everyone, but it does rise for a significant amount of people. I had my bloods done at about four months in and my cholesterol had raised a little bit. Over time, I fully expect it to go up further. And that's not a huge concern to me. When you go to your doctor, your doctor will talk to you about HDL, the, the good cholesterol, LDL, the bad cholesterol, and your triglycerides. On a carnival diet, you're gonna see your triglycerides come down. Triglycerides are raised by carbohydrates and we're not having carbohydrates, so that will come down. First of all, I have to caveat this by saying I'm not a doctor. You know I'm not a doctor. I know I'm not a doctor, but we have to say it. This isn't medical advice. Don't rely on this for medical advice. Do check with a practitioner about any concerns you have. When you go to your GP, they'll look at your overall cholesterol and your HDL, LDL and triglycerides. And what will happen is if they're raised, the doctors will throw statins at you and say you must go on these statins because you have to bring your cholesterol down. Now, I have a few issues with that. There's an issue where um, some people 
their cholesterol goes sky high and it looks really, really alarming on paper. But actually, when they have a CAC score done, which is a type of scan into your arteries, then there's no risk whatsoever. Their arteries are empty of cholesterol. The thing you've got to look for with cholesterol is your HDL to triglycerides ratio. And that needs to be under two to my understanding. The way I look at it for myself is when I started carnivore, yeah, my cholesterol was a little bit lower, but I am 90 pounds lighter. I am able to exercise a lot more. I'm no longer bed bound. All of these things can only bring positive health benefits to me and elongate my life. Then that's going to be a higher risk in my mind. I'm not a doctor. I don't know for certain, but in my mind, that's going to be a higher risk for a heart attack than having high cholesterol and being otherwise healthy. So another reason that people may not want to do the carnival diet is fatigue levels. They imagine that you're going to get really knackered on this diet and have no energy. And that couldn't be further from the truth. You will go through a period in the beginning of the diet of fatigue. And that is because you're not yet fat adapted. When you start the carnival diet, you need to go from glucose being your main source of energy to fat because protein is a really poor source of energy. So you want to get your energy from fat. So you have to ensure you're eating adequate amounts of fat. And when you are, and when your body fully moves over to the fat model, you will be considered fat adapted. But there's this gap in the middle when your body isn't receiving the glucose anymore and your body will make glucose itself if it needs to. So it will be making a little bit, I believe from the liver. But when you're in that gap, you're not filling up on high carbohydrates anymore. Your body has to learn to take that fat as energy. And in the interim, you may well experience some side effects of fatigue. I did experience this. It went on for quite a while. I have fatigue anyway, because my chronic fatigue, but it got a lot worse than it had been where I wasn't getting out of bed at all. And this lasted, I can't remember how long it lasted now. It was a little while, might have been two months, I think. Yeah, two months rings a bell. And there was times when I was thinking about giving up because of it. But I stuck with it because I was seeing weight loss and I was seeing an improvement in my chronic illness. So a few little tips. If you do go into this kind of era of fatigue, there are some things you can do. You want to make sure you're getting adequate sleep. Make sure you're taking electrolytes. Make sure you're getting enough calories and don't fall off the wagon to have a little bit of carbohydrate because you're lacking in energy because this will be counterproductive. You need to get into that fat adapted mode as quickly as possible. And that can only happen if you're not having carbohydrates. So another issue that is gonna put off some people is waking up too early. A lot of people on the carnival diet report that they're falling asleep fine, but they're waking up at like 3 a.m. It's a whole thing. Lots and lots of people this is happening to, myself included. And it was really frustrating. I would say for a good few months, I was completely exhausted from a lack of sleep because I was sleeping no more than four to five hours a night. And there's no real answer to this. Um, there's supplements you can take, melatonin. Um, there's a few other ones you can take as well that I've tried. Glycine is another one that helped me out for a bit but you've just got to allow yourself. I think once you become fat adapted, then your sleep is going to be better. Make sure you're getting plenty of exercise, complete all the sleep hygiene things that you can do, like no computers, an hour before bed, etc. All those things will help you, but it really isn't about falling to sleep. It is about staying asleep. And if you do wake up, just try and lay there and relax rather than thinking of loads of things, because that's what I do. So I think of loads of things and then I just am 
wired, completely wired. If all else fails, get up and do something. Have a nap in the day if you have to while this is passing. So sugar addiction is another really big one. A lot of people say, I'd love to do carnival, but I couldn't because I've got such a sugar addiction. And when you've got a sugar addiction, you can't stop eating. So the thought of eating one thing, meat, and not eating as often is quite daunting, really. So I think what we've got to understand is sugar addiction is caused by eating carbohydrates. When I first started this diet, I was doing carnivore, but I was still having like an avocado and a banana. And um, what happened is I was still hungry a lot, which caused me to eat more avocados and more bananas because I was seeking the sugar in those things. When I cut them out completely, my appetite decreased significantly. Now, I am someone with a sugar addiction. So when I cut out all carbohydrates, apart from a little bit of carb in the cheese, then my sugar addiction went away. Not for good, it's always a temporary thing. You have to keep maintaining things in order for it to stay away. So for example, if I'm doing the carnivore diet for two months and then I have an ice cream, those sugar cravings, that sugar addiction is gonna come straight back. If you reduce your carbohydrates to almost nothing, you should not get any sugar cravings, certainly after that initial period when you become fat adapted. The next reason that people are put off of the carnival diet or they complain when they're on the diet is because you can't have sauces and condiments. Now, when I, before I started this diet, I was a sauces fiend. I would put ketchup on everyone. On everyone? <laughs> Yeah, I'll go around putting ketchup on people. No, I would put ketchup on everything and I didn't know how I was going to survive without it. And to be honest, in the beginning of the diet, it was quite difficult, but hey-ho, I managed it. I don't have sauces now. There are recipes online that you can do, that you can make that are either keto-friendly or carnival-friendly. I mean, you've got to look at what is in sauces, the pre-made, the packaged, the processed sauces. In Heinz ketchup, it's sugar and it's salt. If you just use salt instead, that's gonna add a lot of flavor to your meat. If you add fat, so butter, then that's also gonna add lots of flavor. And in an ideal world, you won't need sauces if you use salt and butter, because it's just gonna taste phenomenal. You can also add cheese, which will give it lots of flavor. You can make sauces with cheese as well. So all these things I've discussed today are roadblocks in the way of starting the carnival diet or staying on it. But if you really research these individual things, there are ways around stuff. There are ways of fixing stuff. If not, there's ways of changing your mindset to them and educating yourself. Education is so important. So do not let any of these things stop you from achieving greatness by going on a carnival diet. If you like this video, do hit subscribe, like and comment. Consider purchasing a coffee and I will catch you in the next one. Check out this video, which was the last video I did. Not that many people saw it, but I think you should because you're going to absolutely love it. I'll catch you next time. Bye.